Good afternoon, Myung-sub. Good afternoon, Paulina. <coughs> Hello, 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 Sing, Kang. Hello, Professor. Hello. Your uh, surname is, uh, surname is Kang? Uh, yes, Professor. Okay. Kang. Hello, Khan. Hello, Professor. Mm. No, 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 yeah. Hello. Huh? No, no, nothing. <laughs> Good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon. Um, I sent you all the the midterm results to you guys yesterday. So some of you maybe not do not be satisfied with the result, but uh, there's always uh, I think you guys can make up in the binary, okay? And the average was a uh, five point two four uh, four. Or two, yeah. So uh, I think it was not bad. Uh, it's not bad. Um, so where most of you guys feel, uh, felt uh, the exam was pretty difficult, but the result was not not so bad. So for me, it's good. Um, I'm thinking of giving you guys some assignments. Uh, essay assignment, okay. So then, yeah, I tried to uh, put the quality of your essay into the binary assessment. Okay. Let me think of what, what kind of assignment I'm gonna give you guys. <clears throat> Today is pretty cloudy. Wow. Look at this cat. Maggie, is this your cat? Maggie, you are there? No. Is there anything you want to say about midterm results? Anything? Professor. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank yeah, uh, John, uh, Zhang Yu. Um, okay, I'm gonna reply uh, to your email uh, this, uh, after this class, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing <laughs> I found uh, yesterday from the research is that the most uh, the most Korean students uh, 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 do not perform very well. <laughs> so, yeah, some of them uh, did good, but many Korean students, yeah didn't get a good score. But anyway, they gonna, yeah, they gonna make up.
the reason I put this picture is that, okay, so how can you describe this picture? This is the, um, the picture from, picture taken in the universe. So not taken in the universe, this is, um, this is universe, this is a part of the universe. So the word, the one of the words that you can describe with this, uh, this picture is chaos, right? It, it looks chaotic, right? Doesn't look, it doesn't, where not organized at all, right? So, but we, uh, human beings, uh, everything uh, that exists in uh, on Earth and uh, in this whole universe has come from this chaos, right? So what I'm trying to say is that the even um, Okay, um, yeah, so we, we are talking about uh, corporate finance and uh, uh, we are trying to uh, get some uh, specific numbers, right? Uh, based on, on the information we have, um, but, uh, but the, but, to be uh, to be honest, uh, for me, the, the all the numbers we get based on the formulas are just the four four pocket numbers, not the exact num not the exact um, not not the true uh, not not the true numbers. So we we just uh, try to um, try to close uh, to the truth using uh, various types of formulas. Uh, so, so still we are in a very, um, we, we may feel very organized when, when you get some um, numbers based on formula and uh, make some forecast and make decisions based on the, um, the results. Uh, so, but actually uh, we are still uh, in, a very, we are surrounded by many things not uh, controllable. So I don't know. It, it makes sense. Okay, let's uh, take a look at return a little bit more. Okay, so last time, last in the last uh, the Tuesday, we talked about the geometric average return. So I tried to make you guys understood a little better. Um, I, I'm trying to make you guys understood understand this geometric return average return a little better. Okay. Um, okay. This is the the formula to get the future value, right? You guys may be pretty familiar with this formula, future value, right? one plus return, right? And exponential, yeah, depends on the number of period. So the one thing in the, uh, in the future value is that the return is the, in return is constant, right? So let's say if you want to get future value in three years, right? So if, if you deposit the money with the bank, and then if you want to know based on the interest rate, if you want to know your future value of your deposit, then you simply multiply this interest rate three times, right? O one plus R exponent three, 
right? This is the, how you get the future value. But this return interest is the same every year, year one, year two, year three, right? The reason, um, if you make a deposit with the bank, uh, then as far as the interest rate is fixed, then we are gonna use the same, supposed to use the same uh, interest rate to get the future value in three years, right? Then take a look at this geometric return. Okay, geometric return. Um, okay, before we go to here, if you want to know the return, the, uh, the fixed return from this future value, let's see, one plus R three, right? How to, how, you just uh, um, move some num numbers and, uh, and rather just like this, you can change future value. Right? Minus one, right? This is the exchange rate, and sorry, interest rate, right? Or simply future value, right? Minus one. R. So this formula looks pretty similar to this geometric return, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The one thing, the, the one thing different from uh, the, the, the difference between future value and geometric return is that in the geometric return, every period, uh, the rate of return is different, okay? Rate of return is different. In future value, when you calculate future value, you use the same rate of return. But in geometric return, every period, uh, year one, year two, year three, year, year n, the rate of return is different. But this is the reality, right? If you make investment, your return for a specific year is gonna change every year, right? So if you want to know your future value of your investment, you're supposed to use this geometric return. Let's say geometric return is R, R, G, right? R, G plus one, right? And uh, one plus R, one, one plus R, two, right? And two, one plus R, N, N, exponent N, right? Because this, moves here. So, future value is R one plus R, one plus R, the same interest rate, but geometric return, different rate of return in every year, okay? So then this is gonna be 
future value, right? Same, right? Same, same. So basically geometric return is the future value, but the one, the one thing different from future value or time value in terms of time value money, future value, uh, the one thing different from uh, the future value is that the interest rate in every year is different, okay? But still, if you want to know uh, the one specific rate that makes uh, the, the um, that makes uh, the cash flows every year same as the uh, the current the the the, the, um, uh, the future value uh, of your investment that is going to be the geometric return, okay? This is future value. So one single return. You can find one single return as far as you know, um, the uh, future value, right? Then if you know this, uh, this uh, return every year, and uh, you you know the uh, value future value x amount, then you can find out one single uh, return that makes the the whole uh, future cash flows same as the uh, future value. But the future value, uh, the 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 the. Uh, the um, There, there should be um, some invest, uh, some uh, initial investment. So uh, the, you can find one single geometric return if, if you know other variables. So anyway, uh, geometric return is no uh, not much different from a future value. One, this one thing different from future value is that they're gonna use it is gonna use the different return in every year. Okay. So what about ill to maturity? We also learned about ill to maturity. Ill to maturity is also, okay, not, not much different from future value and geometric return. Um, current price multiplied by, multiplied by one plus ill to maturity exponent n, then what we are gonna have, what is gonna be the result? Current price multiplied by one plus it maturity. This is, uh, uh, um, let's say the life of the bond, uh, the period of the maturity. Then what we are gonna have from this calculation? Mikhail, what on the left side, on the left side, what is this? What is this uh, calculation you want to be saying? What is calculation uh, would result in? Mikhail, you are there? Polina, you are there? Uh, yes, Professor, I'm here. Okay, so if you, based on this calculation, what, using this calculation, what do you, what, what, what do you expect the result? What, can, what result do you, do you expect? Current price multiplied by one plus it maturity. Is it future value? Not specific value. Um, Okay, just, just uh, okay. The yield maturity is the rate required in the market on a bond. The yield maturity is the is the rate that makes the uh, future 
makes the um, makes the, the the current price the current price uh, so the uh, the future cash flow uh, the the present value of the future uh, cash flow uh, some of the the current the present value of the future cash flow equal to current price that is the yield maturity yield maturity is the rate that makes the present value the sum of the present value of the future cash flow which is coupon payment same as uh, current price okay so then if you multiply current price with uh, one plus it maturity then what are we going to have as a result Honestly, I don't really know, but the formula one plus yield maturity times maturity seems like some, some percentage calculation, but I don't think so, but it looks really similar. Yeah, so. Okay. The current price, current price of bond. Okay. Current price of bond. If you if you use yield to maturity, if you use the yield of of a specific bond, right? Then the discounted. Uh, the value of future coupon payments at this yield rate, yield, the sum of the sum of the discounted uh, value of future uh, the coupon payment discounted at yield, yield maturity, is going to be same as the current price, right? So here, what I'm saying is the only coupon. Coupon payment. So this is kind of a calculation of the future value of current price of a bond, right? So you purchase a bond, X amount, yeah? The price of a bond is set in the market. So you purchase bond as a specific amount. And if this yield to maturity is multiplied until the period to maturity, sorry, maturity, then you should expect, you should expect the future value of this bond. So future value of a current, uh, future value of current, future value of this current price is gonna be, um, future value of this bond. Sorry, it sounds a little bit- uh, Yeah, Professor, as I said, yeah. So that's yeah. why I was quite surprised that it's not future value. So what, what is the future value of a bond? What is the future value of a bond? What is the future it's, value of a bond? It's the value of money, which will be, which the money will cost uh, after maturity. 
Yeah, so, so at how many money does will it be? At maturity, you? what are we gonna get? What amount are I gonna get? What 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 is uh, what is what is the term? I mean, what is the term you call? So at, at, at maturity, you wanna receive some amount. What is this? That's face value, right? Face value, par value. You wanna receive a par value of the bond, right? So this is gonna be par value. Par value of bond. And this is the future value of a bond. Okay, so let's say this, we don't have any numbers here, right? But basically you make some deposit with a bank. So let's say the deposit you make with the bank is the current price, okay? But the only difference is that we are talking about bond rather than deposit, bank deposit. Right, and this yield to maturity is just like uh, interest rate, right? Then uh, N is the uh, maturity bond, but this here N is kind of a deposit period, okay? And uh, after a period, after N period, you're gonna receive some future value from the bank, the, the, the whole amount of uh, uh, the compound uh, uh, the, with uh, principal amount and with uh, the compounded interest, right? Likewise, uh, at the end of the, uh, the, the uh, when, when mature is up, then you are going to receive a par value, right? In the meantime, in the meantime, before you reach uh, maturity, in the meantime, you want to receive coupon payment, like you receive interest, right? So par value is a principal amount, right? As, as you uh, receive a prin uh, the principal amount uh, at, uh, at the end of the deposit period. So it's maturity is, Basically, the interest rate in the future time value of money, right? Okay. Yeah. One single, uh, but it, it is not um, out there. We have to uh, calculate using the current price and the coupon uh, payments and the number of uh, period remaining up to maturity, okay? So all in all, what I'm trying to deliver to you guys is that future value, it to maturity, geometric return, almost same. We are talking about the same thing, okay? You guys get it? Yes, Professor. Okay. Okay, what about this? Um, annual percentage rate, arithmetic average, effective or annual rate, future value, geometric value, its maturity, compound interest rate, Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, let's make a grouping of the of the terms of, uh, of the similar nature. Um, okay. 
um, group A and group B. So let's see, okay, annual percentage rate, group A, and effective annual rate, group B. Then arithmetic average should go to A or B. Benedict, do you think arithmetic average should go to group A or group B? Uh, A, maybe? Yeah, A. How about, how about future value? Um, uh, Oksana? Before uh, uh, the, the Bennett, why do you think arithmetic average should go to group A? Same as, uh, uh, same as, uh, I mean, same group, uh, like same group. Uh, why do you think the arithmetic should be in, in group A? Same as your, and, and your, and your, and your percentage rate. Do you think the, the, uh, there's an in common between annual percentage rate and arithmetic average? Yeah, I think to calculate the average makes more sense if you have to explain the annual percentage, so. Yeah, so annual percentage rate, let's say if you have a 10% annual percentage rate, right? Half of this, uh, let's say, if you divide the year on uh, four quarters, right? Then each quarter, the percentage of each quarter is just 0 0.25%, right? Just to divide four times, just divide by four, right? So when you calculate average, average uh, arithmetic uh, average, you just uh, um, add uh, numbers and divide the number of, uh, add uh, the, if you have a one, two, three, four, then you divide four, right? So annual average rate and arithmetic average is just, they, all the numbers, they treat all the numbers as um, independent, right? So if you add uh, what's your point to five, four times, then you only have 10 and 10% 10, uh, 10 annual rate. Likewise, uh, arithmetic average, you just simply add all the numbers to get the average, right? So that's why one and two is in the same, could, could be in the same uh, group A. How about um, geometric value, yield maturity, a compound interest rate, future value? They are all, they have similar natures. So that they could be on the uh, group B if you divide it uh, between A and B, right? Effective annual rate is, uh, if you have a four quarters, uh, four quarters of a coupon payment, then effective annual rate is 0 0.25 plus one, uh, plus one plus 0 0.25 and minus one, right? So, One period of interest rate supposed to supposed to ha have a, supposed to affect supposed to have effect on the second period of uh, interest rate interest sorry right so we multiply so they are not independent on one period after one period from from one period to another period they are not independent they are yeah related. So future value, geometric value, age maturity, compounded interest rate, they are all based on that uh, actual uh, rate of return, actual interest rate.
So I'm just trying to give you guys some insight to, on the various uh, terms of uh, return or uh, various terms of return because arithmetic average also yeah it could be used as a, uh, to calculate the return right. So this is all about uh, rate of return right. But there's some something in common among them or difference like annual percentage rate or arithmetic average they have in common but different from an effective annual rate or geometric return right geometric return geometric value of geometric return do you guys understand do you guys follow me are you, are you guys following me Young Sub, do you get it? Young Sub, you are there? Yes, sir. So do you get it? Uh, yeah. Hey, just let me know if you are really uh, get it or not. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Well, what, what, do you get it? Most of it, like I understood. Okay, I see. Professor. Uh huh. Oh, actually, I'm a little bit confusing between A and B. Can you please repeat the difference between A and B? Okay. I don't. Know. Under A, we are going to have annual percentage rate and the arithmetic average, and Group B, we are going to have effective annual rate, future value, geometric value, yield maturity, compound interest rate. The difference between uh, annual percentage rate, arithmetic average is that, sorry, annual percentage rate, arithmetic average, and the others is that annual percentage rate, arithmetic average, when they, um, As I explained here, just a minute. Four quarters, quarter one, quarter two. Three, Let's say annual percentage rate is 10%, right? Uh, and if you have four times the uh, interest payment, right, quarterly payment, then based on the annual percentage rate, the interest rate, the quarterly interest rate is simply 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So if you add uh, these four interest, uh, then you're gonna have interest rate, then you're gonna have 10%, right? But when, when, um, when it comes to effective annual rate, if you have uh, uh, four times, four times interest at uh, zero point two five, then you are supposed to multiply one plus zero to five four times and minus one, right? That is effective annual rate. Right, so not you not add each interest rate, but you should multiply the the interest of each period to get the effective annual rate. So, if you add simply add the interest rate, it means that each period is independent. 
right? Q1 does not affect uh, Q2, Q2 does not affect Q3, right? All the periods that, uh, all the period, all the, uh, the payments of interest is independent, but effective, uh, under the effective uh, interest rate, one period of interest uh, supposed to affect the next period, okay? That's why we multiply. Let's say you have $100, right? And uh, one, if after one period, you wanna have one point, Two point a one hundred two point five dollars, right? And this one hundred two point five dollars is gonna be right based on the effective annual rate. You are supposed to have uh, one point two. You are supposed to uh, you're, you're supposed to calculate like this to get the to get the uh, total amount. And if you, uh, yeah, to get 102.5 and one plus zero two. No, just, uh, just to calculate interest amount, you simply zero two point zero point two five. Then you have interest amount in Q2, right? So your the amount you should uh, calculate to get interest in the in the Q2 has increased, right? But under the annual percentage rate, you simply multiply 100 at 0.5. And Q2, 100 uh, multiply to to five. So your interest is same each each period, each quarter. Your interest amount is just 2.5. Okay. So this amount, so this interest amount is different from the from the amount based on the effective annual effective annual rate. So effective annual rate is Basically, same as the future, same as the calculation of a future value of money. Okay. Thank you, Professor. You get it? Yes, I got it. Okay. Um, I hope you guys to get some. Uh, insight uh, from uh, this explanation because I think you may be, because uh, we have talked about many, uh, many terms like annual percentage rate, arithmetic, arithmetic average, geometric, uh, but in the end, if you, look, if you look at them very closely, they are all in, they have something in common. Okay, they have something in common. So that's what I'm trying to uh, tell you. Um, it's a little bit hard, a little bit difficult uh, to clearly, but I, I think you guys may uh, may get it, okay? Okay. Okay. Then let's talk about risk. A risk. Uh, we already talked about risk uh, in the previous lecture. Mm, risk is the changes in the ch return volatility. So if in the geometric when you take the geometric return here, when this uh, each period return, R1, R2, 
when this each pair return is fluctuates significantly, then we have a high risk. So even though the and the geometric return, uh, geometric return is one single return, right? One single return that represent uh, that um, that makes the that makes the the uh, that result in future value of your investment, right? One single return, even though um, during the whole period of investment period, your uh, annual return is different, right? Uh, likewise, like we uh, could calculate yield maturity, uh, yield maturity, you can get one single return that uh, that that makes your investment uh, same as future value, the, 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 the future, yeah, future value. Future value means that uh, the, the actual result of the investment, okay? So even though the Geometric return is, uh, let's say, R1, R2, let's say, same. But, okay, um, 10, 10, 2, two, um, two, two. Right. Uh, right. So not this. Okay. Two multiply two multiply four point five and one one ten. So at the end of the day, we have the same return, right? Let's say two is year one return, year two return, year three return, year one, year two, year three return. This is gonna be geometric return, 10%. But over the three years. So we made investment over three years and um, the, uh, let's say we made an investment of $100, then we earned the 110, right? In years after year three. So investment A, investment B, investment A, A, B, the end result is same, 110. But investment A, if you look into the, the 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 uh, the annual return of investment A year one is two percent uh, two percent four point five percent for example and then your investment B is one percent one percent ten percent return one one percent return one percent ten percent return right so even though the results are the same there is a huge uh, fluctuations in investment B when it comes to the the, uh, the 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 annual return, right? So, which one do you think? Uh, which one do you think is more riskier uh, investment? B, right? So, that is the risk. So, return volatility. The change the if return is the every year when the return uh, significantly changes, then we. Uh, we consider that uh, is more. We consider that as a riskier, right? The one measure is to one measure. Uh, the one measure, one way to measure risk is the variance and standard deviation. We talked about that. Um, do you guys?
So can you guys uh, can you guys cal uh, can you guys calculate the standard deviation? You guys uh, record you guys record how to calculate standard deviation, how to record the mean. Okay, so um, let's take time and uh, uh, please solve this question. You find a certain stock uh, that had a return of 15%, minus 17%, 23%, and 11% for four year, four of the last five years, okay? If the average return of the stock over this period was 10%, what was the stock return for the missing year? What is the standard deviation of the stock? Okay, first of all, please try to calculate uh, calculate the answer uh, to the, to this one to to the first one. Um, this average return. Let me change this average return. Okay, arithmetic. Average one case and the geometric average. So, please, can you calculate using Excel spreadsheet or calculator? Please calculate um, the stock returns for a missing year means um yeah one missing year stock returns for one missing year can you calculate based on uh, assume uh, assumption that this average the one assumption is that uh, this average return is arithmetic average return the other assumption is the geometric average return can you do that right now and uh, yeah i'm gonna give you just just 10 minutes, okay? Please do that. Please turn on the turn on camera, turn on video, so that I can see you guys working on it. Professor, are we having a quiz right now? Quiz? Like, is this one gonna be graded? Not actually. You're just practicing. And um, all the quizzes you are practicing could come up here, could appear on the exam here.
So you guys finished? Are you, are you guys finished? Um, the 10 minutes has not yet passed, but uh, not, but, but let's let's work on it. Um, okay, first, uh, based on assume that the average return is an arithmetic average return, then to, to find out the missing uh, year's return, okay, uh, based on the arith arithmetic average, each year, the each year, the percentage of return of each year is independent, right? Independent. So whatever the year for each percentage, you just simply 15% and uh, minus 17% plus 23%. You simply add 15 minus 17 plus minus 17 plus, uh, plus 23 percentage. And I don't know, X, another, um, attempt, sorry, plus 11, sorry. Plus 11% and X, right? And you divide five years, five. Then you're supposed to have, uh, 10%. So based on this arithmetic average, using this formula, you are supposed to get X, right? Then that is the uh, missing years uh, return of the stock. So then what is X? Anyone who get this X? 18 percentages. 18%? Okay, 80% is correct. Okay, how about, uh, good job. How about assumption, with the assumption of a geometric average return, how do we get? How do we get this missing years uh, return? Geometric return, the Average geometric return, average return is uh, each year is not independent. So one year, uh, one year affect another year, the other years. So we have to basically multiply, multiply each year's return, 0 0.5 and one plus zero minus uh, one minus minus seven, right? And one plus zero three, two three, and one plus eleven and X, right? So this is going to be same as uh, one plus 0 0.1, four times, right? So if you use one single average rate and, uh, uh, sorry, five times, and if you, multiply five times, then you are supposed to have, uh, yeah, uh, same results as you, as you have, uh, uh, as, you, as you did like this. So this one single average rate makes the, yeah, results in, results in the same as, uh, as this one. So the, the, the thing is that uh, under the geometric average, each year the return affect other years. So once you get X, then you should minus uh, 
deduct minus one, then you're gonna have a rate of return. So what is the uh, what is the uh, rate of return based on the assumption that based on the geometric based on the geometric uh, averaging? Anyone who get it? No. Okay, so anyway, this is the formula, okay? And once you have X, then you deduct the minus one, then you wanna have a, uh, return, okay? You get it? Yes, professor. Okay. And standard deviation is, um, for each uh, return, you simply, Uh, not this way. You simply deduct, let's for example, 15%, let's say, a for example, standard deviation, k standard deviation is the same. I mean, between, there's no difference between the, um, the arithmetic, uh, between, uh, between the between the two arithmetic average and geometric average. Whatever average you have, the way to calculate standard deviation is the same. So let's say, uh, based on if your return is 18, uh, uh, so, uh, okay, average is on 10%, then 15% uh, minus okay, 0 0.15 minus 0 .0 0 0.1 and square. And uh, minus 0 0.17, minus 0 0.1 square, yeah. So like this, so one, two, three, four, five. So we have uh, five differences. So if you add uh, these uh, squares, then you have a standard, uh, you have a variance, okay? And uh, you, if you, uh, once you have a variance, then then you put root, then you have a variance root, then you have a standard deviation. Uh, let me see this okay, XFR. bar. So let's say this is the uh, return, okay, every year, different from the, the question, quiz, quiz question, but just assume this is the return of over the four, four years, every year, annual return over the four years, different uh, return. And then let's say average return, average return is 0 point to, uh, average return is 4%, then Deviation, uh, you, you, you scale the deviation, right? The difference between uh, actual return and average return, actual return, average return, right? And you square, the, devi the deviation is squared, right? Two times. And then you add all these, uh, the square deviation. Then based on the formula, this is the uh, you divided uh, based on the formula n minus one, right? Four minus one. You divide three and then the square root of this zero point, uh, square root of this, you, you wanna, the square root of this variance is gonna be the standard deviation. 
So you can use uh, um, the formula or Excel. In the Excel sheet, you can find, uh, if you go to the uh, formulas and then uh, find out the variance, B-A-R-S, then you can get the variance. And if you go to standard deviation in the, uh, the statics formula, then you can also get standard deviation. So please try to uh, use, uh, try to practice, uh, pr please practice this calculation using this Excel, okay? That will be helpful. Okay. So anyway, uh, this is a kind of a, a one way to measure viscous, okay? Standard deviation and uh, variance and standard deviation. Uh, we talked about number distribution last time. Um, okay. Uh, Normal distribution, normal distribution. This zero means uh, uh, basically mean, okay? Whatever mean we have in this normal distribution being is indicated as zero, okay? And, you know, the more the uh, return is deviated from this mean and the riskier, okay? So let's say this is mean, okay, mean, this is mean. If, if return is one standard deviate, one, uh, one, one standard, if you return is deviate from deviate one standard deviation, right? This is the one standard deviation. Plus or minus uh, return is higher than mean by one standard deviation or lower than by one standard deviation. In the normal distribution, in the normal normal distribution means that normal distribution is um, is the one it, 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 in most cases the distribution shows uh, this uh, normal distribution so in this so it's just assume that we have a normal, we, we, the, there are, in reality, the tax, uh, the, the stock returns actually do not show normal distribution, okay? Some shows some, um, there's some uh, huge outliers. So in, that, in, in reality, the stock returns do not show normal distribution. But uh, before we get there, uh, just for the purpose of, of on under, uh, purpose, just to uh, to understand uh, this uh, the concept of risk, we start with this is normal distribution. Normal distribution shows uh, show, uh, 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 the the half side of uh, the the downside downside and offside uh, between mean shows the same percentage in the normal distribution. So just to understand the concept of risk, we start with this normal distribution. But if you get deeper, and if you get deeper um, the actual distribution, actual distribution of stock returns do not show normal distribution. This distribution, the distribution means that, uh, why do we have, why do we learn the normal distribution? Because returns are, Every year, we have different returns, right? So 
let's say, as you can see here, right? Average return is 10%. So 10% is average return. But one, on one specific year, it becomes 15%. And one specific year becomes a minus 17%. On one specific year, it becomes 23%. One specific, it becomes 11%. And one specific year, it shows 18%. So let's say, This is mean, right? And uh, um, I think we need uh, to, uh, to, to, to have this normal distribution. We, we need to also calculate the uh, probability. But um, the one, one thing, uh, one thing, the return is uh, the, uh, distributed from, uh, distributed from the, uh, deviate from this uh, mean, right? 10%. That's, that's, the, uh, that's this X line shows this um, dispersion of the returns. And this uh, vertical shows uh, the frequency, frequency, okay? The probability. Uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the 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 uh, the frequency, okay. The probability is the the, the total, um, the to total the, the the total area. So. This is mean, and the more the each return is deviated from mean, the riskier and the, the probability is getting lower in the normal distribution. Okay, so this twenty three percent and this minus seventy percent in terms of. Uh, the frequency or probability in terms of frequency, in terms of frequency, where not that high, right? So if you uh, draw the graph in, uh, in normal distribution, looks like it is. So, so the chance that you have a return that deviates from mean by three, st three, standard, devi three uh, standard deviation is pretty low, okay? Pretty low. Even minus three standard deviation is low. At the same, yeah, as, 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 as yeah, so, this 68%, to 95%, 99.7% means if the, the, the chance that you're gonna have a, a return that is one standard deviation from mean is 68% out of a total return you want to get. Okay, so let's make you make a stock investment and um, let's say there's some, some super specific, uh, average return of your stock investment. And the, and the, the risk, the, your uh, return that deviate from mean return by one standard deviation 
the, the chance the chance that your return deviate by one standard deviation is 68%. Okay. Uh, not 68 percent um yeah 68 percent so 68 percent of your uh six um 68 percent your actual return that deviates from mean by one standard deviation is 68 percent uh, in other words uh, you make investment uh, uh, you make investment and you want to get return right and then let's say out of 100 uh, you you have a 100 um, let's say 100 times okay 100 times out of 100 times the chance that you uh, the chance that your return is 100 uh, one standard uh, one standard uh, your return is uh, deviates from mean by one standard deviation is 68%. And uh, your return that deviate from being by two standard deviation is 95%. And if your return deviate to, from mean by three standard deviation, then 99.7% of return is included in this normal distribution. So let's say you have 100 uh, return and one standard deviation include 68% of return, okay? If return is deviated by two standard deviation, 95% of return is included, okay? Three standard deviation, 99.7% return is included. So the more uh, the return deviate from mean return, then most of your actual returns are covered. Yeah, pretty simple. So which one is the most risky? Uh, the more you go to the left and uh, right, much riskier. Okay. The more, the closer to mean is less riskier, less risk. Okay. So if you take high risk, which means uh, your return could deviate from mean by three standard deviation, three st standard deviation, then you think of uh, uh, your return is gonna be much more uh, your re your return is much more fluctuate much more have a much more chain uh, ch your 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 uh, return will be much more volatile yeah 
here. Let's take this question. Suppose the returns on long-term government bonds are normally distributed. Suppose, okay, normally distributed. Normally distributed means that between, let's say this is mean, okay, and mean, then this shows a bell curve. So uh, left side and right side shows the uh, symmetrical, okay? Symmetrical. Assume long-term government bonds they have a mean return of 6%. So mean return is 6%. We show this zero. Zero means that zero standard deviation, right? So mean has a zero standard deviation, right? Because we start from mean, right? When you calculate standard deviation, we deduct actual numbers. We deduct standard, we deduct mean from actual numbers, right? So mean, ha mean has zero standard deviation. That's why we show this zero. And standard deviation is 9.9%. So what is the approximate probability that your return on these bonds will be less than minus 3.9% in a given year? Approximate probability your bonds return, your return on these bonds will be less than minus 3.9%. So mean is 0 6.0, right? But the one standard deviation is 9.9, .9, right? So if your return, actual return deviate by one standard deviation on the left, right? Then you're gonna have minus 3.9%, right? So here, we are here, right? So return is Minus 3.9%. The one standard deviation, right? One standard deviation, 68%, right? This on the left, the right, 68%. But we are talking about less than minus three, minus 3.9%. So we are talking about this one, right? So then uh, total percent is 100%, right? And the 68% and uh, 32%, right? 32% is divided by two, right? Then, The 16%, 16%. So this side is 16% and this side is 16%. So less than minus 3.9% in a given year is 16%. So how to interpret this uh, 16%? If you have uh, this standard deviation, 9.9% when you have return 6.0%, uh, so standard deviation is a little bit high, right? So,
if your return is deviated by one standard deviation, then you're gonna have uh, minus 3.9%. Uh, and if you want to know where, what if we have lower return than minus 3.9%. What is the chance we are gonna have less than 3.9% based on this uh, fluctuation of, uh, in terms of standard deviation 9.9%. What's the chance we are gonna have less than 3.9%, okay? So, okay, so let's assume we, we, our return shows a normal distribution. So if we assume uh, our return shows a normal distribution, then I think uh, based on this standard deviation, uh, the percentage uh, we have less than 3.9% is 16%. Okay. That's how we interpret this question this result. So you guys need to, you guys need to read this uh, normal distribution based using, based on this uh, mean return and the standard deviation. So we are going to take on uh, B and C and uh, this, G value in the next lecture. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm trying to uh, deliver some complex uh, concept to you guys today, but I'm not sure if I'm successful. So uh, if you have any questions, please email me. Then I try to uh, give you more further explanation. Okay. Thank you. See you next Tuesday. Bye bye. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor.